much for joining us this wonderful evening. It is um, really a pleasure for Acropolis, for New Acropolis in India, to um, associate with uh, such a wonderful art institution such as Jahangir, where we can celebrate the work of uh, truly a beautiful combination of a philosopher with a photographer. Let me begin with a quick introduction about New Acropolis itself. A lot of you uh, may not know who we are. It's a unique organization. Uh, we're based today in 60 countries uh, with many, many chapters in, e in each country and many thousands of members. There are three underlying principles to the organization. The first being philosophy, meaning philosophy of the classical tradition. Understanding what it means to be a human being and understanding what it means to live in this world and function as human beings within this world. The second principle is that of culture, revival of culture. This is what we call the human tradition, the human legacy. It's a celebration of human life. And oftentimes we find wonderful little suggestions of what it means to be a human being. The third principle is that of volunteering. The act of service is only a manifestation of truly understanding what it means to be a human being. The more we learn, the more we cannot help but serve. Serve life, serve our fellow brothers and sisters, human beings, and of course, serve the planet. I invite you all to grab brochures um, that will give you more information about our activities. We have a very active lineup of public events to which all of you are invited. Uh, let me begin this evening by introduce, introducing the National Director of New Acropolis in India, Mr. Yaron Barzilai. Thanks, Arunto, and welcome to your guest. In uh, New Acropolis, one of the main aspects is, as Arunto said, is philosophy. And um, we understand philosophy as a love of wisdom, as the meaning of the word. And being a philosopher, we understand not as uh, someone who only uh, make an intellectual understanding of ideas, but uh, someone who follow what he understand is right, following the truth or following wisdom, which means to live, live wisdom in the day to day. This always seemed like a great challenge. So one thing is to understand, but to put it in practice seemed to be a great challenge. But the truth is that it's also the great joy. The joy to be a part of, the joy to be connected, the joy to live a meaningful life. To me, on a personal level, I found uh, in the teaching of Plato, like many other philosophers, uh, one of the great uh, practical ways is that uh, the idea that what we consider as truth, wisdom or truth, is uh, but another aspect of the concept of beauty. Well, we can talk about it for long, but uh, if we just follow this idea, it means that the way of the philosopher and the way of the artist are not really separate. And that makes it very, very practical, because to practice beauty, well, it's beautiful and it's practical, and if we follow the ideas of Plato and others, it's also making us more closer to, to truth. Just think about people like uh, Da Vinci, uh, well, Einstein also, well, consider himself as a philosopher, but also as an artist, he used to play violin. Think about Tagore, think about Kabir, and I'm sure you'll find many more. And today, well, those are big names. But it is a great pleasure for me to introduce someone who is a, also a role model for me. Someone who I consider as a teacher because uh, when I started this uh, spiritual adventure, philosophical adventure, I started in uh, Israel, where uh, Pierre Pauline is the founder and also the director of uh, quite a big um, school of philosophy. But he's also an artist who travels in the world like here today, to introduce his art and philosophy. So I won't say much more. I invite Pierre to, before inaugurate, to say a few words. Thank you. Okay. 
Sorry, folks. So, I said it's uh, it's very special for me to be in Mumbai. It's the first place I I discovered when I came in India the first time three years ago. Now it's the fifth time I am in Mumbai, and uh, there is in in India in general in Mumbai and in India something that I I really cannot find or didn't find yet in other places in the world. Like Yaron said, I travel a lot. I didn't travel in all the countries in the world. But I traveled a bit in, well, in Asia, in Asia, in Europe, in America, in Eastern Europe. And each country has its particularity, its characteristic, its, its own feeling, its sentiment. But there is in India something that I think is, is touching the, my way of understanding the art and spirituality. I'm going to try to explain it shortly. I don't want to make a lecture half an hour. Like an artist, as an artist and a philosopher, I consider that art is the ability or the capacity to be transparent. Lower? More? Like this? Yes? Better? Okay. I mean, to be transparent, to be a bridge between the Signification, the matter, the spirituality, the reality, the truth, like Aaron said. And this, this plan, this level of manifestation where we are living our everyday lives at every moment. And the problem is that there is interferences, like filters, our own subjectivities, our own opinions, our personality, if I take the, the meaning of the word personality, which comes from the Latin persona, which means a mask, it's a mask. And well, a mask, if you control it, it is fantastic, because it will, you will use it to manifest yourself. But if you cannot control it, it will create interferences distortions and in general because we identify with our mask I mean we identify with our personality we don't see the real truth we don't see the real beauty we don't see the real harmony it is there it is very difficult to see it to, to catch it to capture it so the philosopher has to to be transparent and I, I think philosophy is not somebody who study philosophy it's not a philosopher. There is a, a lot of people who are studying philosophy. It doesn't make them philosophers. On the other hand, you have maybe a lot of philosophers who never study philosophy. To be a philosopher is to to live, to try to live the, the truth behind the mask, to be transparent, to catch the, the harmony, the beauty of life. And this exhibition. I called it paradox. Why? Because a paradox is something that makes a distortion in the intellect. I mean, something paradoxal, you are going through the pictures and uh, you see it, at the, at the first glance you think, okay, everything is logical. And you stop a second and there's something in the unconscious that the logical doesn't catch. The guy who makes music, but the other one, the child, which is listening, is not moving. Music is about movement. Music is about life. So you have the, you have the movement and you have the inertia. It's, so you, you, you stop. It breaks the intellect. The paradox is something that will create a tension. And this tension, you cannot really capture it with the intellect and it's like you know you have a text an old text a traditional text from tibet from the vajrayana buddhism which is the voice of silence who said that you have 
to calm, to shut down the raja of the sense, of the emotion, of the, which is the mind, the intellect. You have to calm the intellect. So when you see those pictures, what I'm trying to do is to show pictures that you can you understand but you cannot really understand. It's not 100%. There is, there is a break. There is something that different. And for one second, the intellect stops. And it is this moment that something is going. You see, you catch, you perceive, you are touched by something which is behind the visible. The important, the most important, is not what you see. It was comes through what you see. Like said Saint Exupéry, a French writer, the most important is the invisible to the horizons. But the invisible is also the eternal. The invisible is also the thing which is always here, always present. It is our, I think, our essence, our true reality. As human beings, it's the life itself. And maybe art is the, the capacity, the ability to let people see, touch, capture, be in, be in relation with this invisible, with this permanent, for the manifestation. The support, the photography, the image will pass, will die. But the invisible always is there. And the artist is the one who can be a bridge. But to be a bridge, you have to perceive it. You have to be yourself a bridge because I don't think that you can give what you have. I think that you can only give what you are. It's not the same thing because when we're, we're speaking about life, we're speaking about spirituality, it's not about material things. So it's not something what you have. So to be an artist, you have to be a philosopher. And I think that to be a philosopher is just to be alive. It's not more difficult than this. It's not, it's not to, to learn a lot. It's not to know a lot. It's not to think a lot. It's to be, to be alive. To be alive and not, not to accept to survive, but to live. And to be alive is to have a meaning in life. To, I would say in, with, in Indian words, maybe to find your Svadharma and to be one with your Svadharma. So, I let you discover the paradox of the image and I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. With this I invite Pierre to inaugurate officially this wonderful privilege that we have at Jahangir today. Uh, welcome all of uh, all of you, those of you especially who haven't yet had a chance to preview the artwork, to join the artist, Mr. Beloved, our, our beloved Mr. Pierre Paulin, um, to please see the, see the work. Thank you. Have a good evening. Please do enjoy the refreshments and the beverages. Um, I thank both Foodlink and of course your clients for participating in this wonderful event. Thank you so very much.